Greetings LEGO fans and welcome back to another episode of Building the Siege of Bricks Conquest. We are now on what, episode 6? Man does time fly, but we are getting there guys. With all of the progress I've done since you saw the mock last time, we are almost done with all of the groundwork and you know what that means. We only have the house left to finish because I've did some progress on that too and add some final touches on the details and we are done with this beauty. And I know that you are as excited to see the final mock done as I am, but remember that perfection needs time, so I'm going to test your patience a little longer as we still have 2 or 3 weeks until the finale. But first things first, for all of you who just joined the fun of watching this series, here is a quick recap of what the build is all about because what you will see here today is just a part of the fun. The most important thing is that this mock is a part of a collaboration I am making with Edge of Bricks which will show a siege of a medieval castle. So in this collab I am making a part of a village in front of the castle with a road going towards the gate and the crow army marching to tear it down with a battering ram. The Black Falcon castle is a part that Edge of Bricks is responsible for and he actually just finished building and dropped the finale a few days ago so you should definitely check out his video that I will link down below. We already did the Siege of Bricks once 2 years ago but this time it's much bigger and most importantly it will be displayed together on a convention in October which I will talk about at the end of the video so make sure you stay till the end if you want to know where and when exactly you'll be able to see it. But now let's jump to the actual episode and see what I was able to make since the previous one, so sit back and enjoy. Ok guys and we are here on my desk where I just wrapped filming the previous episode and I've just received a couple of orders so why don't we see what I got before I start building again. It's been a while since I actually showed you my workspace, so it should be a nice change for this series. So anyway, what I got in this haul is of course a bunch more green wedge blades for the grass, like 2x3, 2x4, a couple of 45 degrees one both in 3x3 and 4x4, and these smaller two sided ones 2x4. Also, I got a few wedged slopes, both 2x4 and 2x6 that will be useful for changing the ground level, especially on the left edge. Next in line are a few reddish brown wedges, few modified 1x2s to switch on the ram, and few of these plates with frames that should be very useful later on in the house. Ok, now for some dark tan pieces in different shapes and sizes since I've used all of the ones I had for the road and the borders and I will definitely need some for this episode. And finally I've got almost all of the transparent plates I need for the river, both light and dark blue and most importantly the trans clear ones. Also, I just couldn't resist some interesting minific parts like these elves hair pieces or a pair of flat silver wings and some other random but definitely fun pieces. But the things I just had to buy were these fellas right here, which the seller had so cheap that I just had to get them. I will just need to buy dark grey horns for the wampa and hands for the town town but still, it was a bargain I just couldn't pass on, so I guess I know what my next mock is going to be. But first, I have to finish this one, so since I have the plates for most of the water that is still missing, how about we jump into a time lapse and see how much of the river I am actually able to make.
Ok, so I've done all of the water in front of the bridge and I have to say that it looks as good as I expected. I will have to do the backside as well and I have some parts for it left, but for sure not so many transclear ones to fully make the water under the bridge. But since it will not be visible anyway, I can cheat a bit and use some blue ones instead. But I will think about it later on, because now I am eager to hopefully finish the whole groundwork and work on some details. But that I think I'll just build off screen, because it will probably take a lot more time, so I will see you after all of the building back on the white background. Ok, that took a few days, but I finished all of the things I planned, and now let's take a regular tour of the progress like we usually do. And maybe let's start with the pig pen, because I finally figured out a nice small fence that doesn't cover the pigs that much and still look fresh and fits the style of the rest of the build. Here I just used some dark brown droid arms, connected them with brown carrot tops and tangled up with those flex cables I used on the second fence. Of course I have to order a couple more of those droid arms, so that I can surround the whole pig pen with a fence, but I really like how it turned out. I also finished the crops area with the dark tan elements I got, so that the ground structure looks more detailed, and I surrounded it all with grass. And that is actually most of the work I continue to do, because all of the grass groundwork is basically finished and I really like how it looks all covered with those layers of greenery. Even though I just used one color, I can say that it's a boring surface, because the different layers of wedges, tiles and plates, with a couple of stems here and there, really get the job done. I still need some dots pieces to add all around the grass, and finish up this small flat area, but the whole house is now surrounded by grass, so the whole scene is starting to look awesome. But before we talk about the actual progress on the house itself, let's check out this water well I made. I wanted something small to be in actual minifigure scale, but still full of details and I think I nailed it. It's a very simple build and it's just standing here freely made with 4 interlocking brackets, and some cheese slopes and tiles, and the roof is made also with brackets held on these bars with studs, and covered with some tiles and ingots. Such a simple thing, but yet looks so good. And now for the moment you've been waiting for, that is the actual progress on the house. I've completed the bottom floor walls from three sides, since I want the back side of the house open to be able to see the interiors, and I'm very happy of the look. The walls took of course a lot of small pieces and even more time to put together, but now we have a solid base for the rest of the build and actually it came out larger than I thought it would. But hey, I have to make a big house so it won't look too tiny next to the castle. So the texture here looks very similar to the barracks build I did last year, using a lot of plates, masonry bricks and ingot pieces, with a little bit of rounded plates and tiles to give it a rougher look. I was thinking about adding some mud and dirt here and there, but I decided to keep it clean and use only light bluish grey, and I think it looks alright. And of course I had to add a second window as I did in the first wall I did in the previous episode, plus one smaller one, and a doorway in which I placed a pretty simple door. But honestly, I'm not completely happy with how the doorway looks right now. I think I will not make this one brick difference around the door and just make it a straight wall without changing its thickness. What do you think? And yeah, we couldn't forget about a fireplace to keep the residents warm and a chimney to go with that. The upper floor will be made as a half timbered wall but the chimney will go all the way to the top made with stone and get a bit thinner on the second floor just like indicated here with slopes. The most important thing for me is that it has to have a hole inside 
so that I could put cables in it because I want to light the house with lights and put the battery pack somewhere on the upper floor. Now all is left to do is build the upper floor with a technique similar to the one I did in my barracks mock and some kind of an eye catching roof. Still no idea for it though, so if you have some inspirations for fun and unique techniques let me know in the comments. Anyway, that is all the progress for today. A lot of work already made and such little left until the finale so I couldn't get more excited. Too bad I couldn't catch up with Edge of Bricks since he already finished his part, but there is so much other stuff happening right now that I just couldn't find more time for building. And that brings me to the big announcement. If everything goes as planned, we will be displaying both of our parts of the collab on Targi Hobby in Poznań this October. And to be more precise, the convention will be taking place from 29th to 30th of October, so if you are in the area or have an opportunity to come, make sure to catch us there, see the full collab together as one build, and just chat a bit. Of course, not only this build will be there, because we will be taking a few of our other mocks and along with my lugmates from Zbuduimito we have 800 square meters of fantastic lego creations so there will be plenty of fun there. And if you can't make it, I will make a cinematic from the convention showing the whole Siege of Bricks collab so make sure you subscribe and click on the notifications so you won't miss it when it comes out. But first, I have to get back to building and making the finale of my part. So enough of the talking for today and time to get to work. As usual, make sure you smack that like button if you enjoyed today's episode and I will see you again in the finale. And until then my friends, stay safe and keep it bricking.